When applying the dot product approach to the displacement current, we get P average for the displacement current is this J omega epsilon E dotted with the electric field. This is RMS also. We discussed earlier that we would expect to see some power loss associated with displacement current in some non-conductive materials like water and wood. However, from a mathematical perspective, J omega epsilon E RMS appears to be 90 degrees out of phase with E RMS because of the J, implying that this dot product equals zero. Well, is that necessarily true? Or have we maybe made an assumption here that is making this us think that this is true? Actually, this is only true if we assume the permittivity is a purely real number. That is the only way that this dot product is non-zero and results in dielectric heating and power dissipation is if epsilon is a complex number. That is, if epsilon, we can set it to have a real and an imaginary part, so it would be equal to epsilon prime, the real part, minus j epsilon double prime here. In this case, this j omega epsilon e is now j omega epsilon prime minus j epsilon double prime e. And if we now write this out, the first part will be the, with the real epsilon prime. And this is 90 degrees out of phase, out of phase with E, uh, so no heating. Then for the second term, we have J times J minus one, so we get a plus there, omega, epsilon double prime E, and this is in phase with the electric field, so we will get heating and power loss there. If we write Ampere's law using a complex permittivity rather than only assuming it has a real value, we get what's shown here. So this used to be just J omega epsilon E, and now we have both epsilon prime and epsilon double prime. Looking at these different terms, the real part of the permittivity, permittivity, epsilon prime, quantifies the ability of the material to locally store electric field energy in a lossless manner. We discussed that earlier in notes two, WP notes two, on dielectrics, where the total electric field in the material increased when an applied electric field caused the dipoles to align themselves with the applied electric field. The sigma term relates to the acceleration of free charges in conductive materials, and the omega epsilon double prime term is due to dipole rotation friction in dielectric materials. So combining both the sigma and the omega epsilon double prime terms, we can characterize the total power dissipation capabilities of a material. Now experimentally, it is often difficult to separate out which losses are due to sigma uh, versus the omega epsilon double prime. So usually the overall loss is specified by an effective sigma or an omega epsilon double prime. Not both, we would not give both. We give usually one or the other. This means that we can interchangeably use either sigma effective or omega epsilon double prime effective. From now on, either a value for sigma or for epsilon double prime will be given for a material, and we can assume whichever one that is given is an effective value that takes into account all the losses. So you're not gonna see the EFF subscript anymore. You can assume whatever you are given is an effective value. Now we should be aware that both the real and the imaginary parts of the permittivity are frequency dependent. As an example here is shown a graph of the real part of the permittivity as well as the imaginary part, which takes into account all the losses. For distilled water, 
as a function of frequency. So for example, the imaginary part of the primitivity at lower frequencies, it's dominated by conductivity loss, but that starts to diminish as you go to higher frequencies where the dipole rotation law starts to dominate the losses for distilled water. Take out your in-class project notebooks and write down or type that the values for the electrical material parameters, like epsilon prime, epsilon double prime, and sigma, can depend on the frequency of the electromagnetic wave that uh, we're working with. So when we want to study the impact different materials will have on our measurement setup, we need to choose the material values that are appropriate for the frequency range that we are considering.